a recent online post by the Catholic Herald entitled Heretic of the Week, Ellen G. White, criticized the Ellen White and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. But before I do that, I'd like to thank Doug Batchelor for sponsoring this video. Doug Batchelor is one of my favorite preachers, and his messages always help me gain new insights into God's Word. Doug Batchelor also has his own YouTube channel, where he uploads videos on a regular basis. His videos range from sermons, Bible studies, prophecy updates, answers to difficult Bible questions, and more. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen or the link in the video description to subscribe to Doug Batchelor on YouTube today. Back to the online post by the Catholic Herald. One of the first things that caught my attention in that post is the statement that she, talking about Ellen White and her husband James, founded the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now this is only a half-truth. A simple Google search of who founded the Seventh-day Adventist Church reveals that there were four founders, including Ellen White, her husband James White, Joseph Bates, and J.N. Andrews. The online post by the Catholic Herald goes on to say that the church is called Seventh-day Adventist because White claimed that Christ wanted to be worshipped on the Jewish Sabbath. First of all, you never find the term Jewish Sabbath in the Bible. And speaking about the Sabbath, Exodus chapter 20 verse 10 says, The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Therefore, it's God's Sabbath. It belongs to Him and not the Jews. Calling it the Jewish Sabbath is a way for people to discredit Sabbath keeping because they claim it's only for the Jews. But that's very dishonest because the Bible never calls it the Jewish Sabbath and it's not only for the Jews. For example, in Mark chapter 2 verse 27, Jesus said, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The word man here is translated from the Greek word anthropos, which means human being. So it's talking about all mankind. Now the phrase seventh day in the name of the Seventh-day Adventist Church does stand for the Seventh-day Sabbath and it identifies Adventists as Sabbath keepers. But the reason being is because Adventists want to follow the Bible and keep all of God's commandments and the fourth commandment tells us to keep the Sabbath holy. The fourth commandment is found in Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11 and it says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Also the word Adventist in Seventh-day Adventist Church stands for the Advent or Second Coming of Jesus Christ. So Seventh-day Adventists are Sabbath keepers who look forward to the return of Jesus. The online post by the Catholic Herald also claims that Adventists believe in three separate divine persons rather than the Orthodox doctrine of the Trinity. This is simply not true. The belief that there are three gods is called tritheism. Adventists believe in the Trinity and they don't believe that the Trinity is made up of three separate divine persons. This can be easily confirmed by reading the Seventh-day Adventist 28 Fundamental Beliefs online. Fundamental belief number two, the Trinity, states, There is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. God is immortal, all-powerful, all-knowing, above all, and ever-present. He is infinite and beyond human comprehension, yet known through His self-revelation. God, who is love, is forever worthy of worship, adoration, and service by the whole creation. Another thing the online post by the Catholic Herald criticizes the Adventist Church for is the non-existent inscription on the papal tiara adds up to 666 in Hebrew letters. First of all, it's not Hebrew, it's Latin. And I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. But in speaking about the Antichrist, which is also called the Beast in the Book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 states, Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. 
To calculate means to add up. So there is an equation that adds up to 666 which confirms the identity of the Antichrist. Adventists believe this has to do with one of the titles of the Pope, which is Vicarius Fili Dei, which is Latin for Vicar of the Son of God. If you take the title of Vicarius Fili Dei and you convert those letters to Roman numerals and you add those Roman numerals up, you get 666. A quote from the Catholic journal Our Sunday Visitor on April the 18, 1915 reads, The letters inscribed in the Pope's mitre are these, Vicarius Fili Dei which is Latin for Vicar of the Son of God. This is a Catholic quote and Adventists have used this to build a case for the papacy being the Antichrist. The problem with that is, in 1917, our Sunday visitor turned around and said the following. The words Vicarius Fili Dei are not the name of the Pope. They do not even constitute his official title. And Catholic expositors claim that the title of Vicarius Fili Dei is not found on any papal tiara today. So today, we can't prove that was on any papal crown. But it can be proven that Vicarius Fili Dei is an official title that was used for popes in the past. For example, it was used in the donation of Constantine. The donation was purportedly a letter written by Constantine the Great to Pope Sylvester I. In the letter, Constantine supposedly gave temporal power to the Pope calling him Vicarius Fili Dei, the Vicar of Christ. Surprise, surprise, the donation was proven to be a forgery around the year 1440, but that didn't stop the Catholic Church from using it as an official document to sustain the temporal power of the papacy for hundreds of years. Also, the title Vicarius Fili Dei, in reference to the Pope, can be found in the canon law of the Catholic Church. So whether or not Vicarius Fili Dei was inscribed on the Pope's tiara in the past doesn't really matter. What matters is that it is an official title that was used for Popes in the past and its Roman numerals add up to 666, confirming that the papacy is the Antichrist of Bible prophecy. In addition, the claim that the papacy is the Antichrist is not unique to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is a Protestant teaching that originated with Andreas Helwig a German Protestant scholar who wrote a book in 1612 entitled Antichristus Romanus, which means the Roman Antichrist. In it, he converted the letters of Vicarius Fili Dei to Roman numerals and showed how they add up to 666. Many Protestant scholars adopted Andreas Helwig's interpretation and numerous leaders of the Protestant Reformation believed in and taught that the papacy is the Antichrist of Bible prophecy. This includes Martin Luther, John Calvin, John Knox, Thomas Cranmer, John Wesley, Charles Spurgeon, and many more. Unfortunately, many Protestant churches today have renounced the teaching that the papacy is the Antichrist in place of futurism, which is a prophetic concept that teaches Antichrist is still to come, which actually originated from the Roman Catholic Church. But that's another subject. There is a lot of things that the Post from the Catholic Herald got flat out wrong or misconstrued about Ellen White and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. This is not the first time that I have come across someone making false claims against Ellen White and Adventism to attempt to discredit the religion. I remember when I started studying the Bible with some Seventh-day Adventists nearly 20 years ago. At the time, I was going to a Sunday-keeping church, and when some of the members found out I was studying with the Seventh-day Adventists, they made claims about the religion that I found out were simply not true after I investigated them. Eventually, I became a Seventh-day Adventist. I found all of the teachings of the Adventist church to be completely biblical. And I believe that Ellen White had the gift of prophecy in fulfillment of Acts chapter 2 verses 17 through 18, which says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. If you would like to learn more about the beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I encourage you to check out the free online Bible study guides by Amazing Facts. They deal with a variety of subjects, including the reliability of Scripture, the Ten Commandments, Heaven, Death, God's Judgment, 
the Antichrist, the Mark of the Beast, and more. Click on the link in the video description to check out the Amazing Facts Bible Study Guides today. An online post by the Catholic Herald made several accusations against Ellen White and the Seventh-day Adventist Church which are inaccurate or simply not true. It fails to mention that the Adventist Church had four founders. It was not founded only by Ellen White and her husband. It claims that Adventists worship three separate divine persons, which is basically three gods, which is blatantly false. It calls the Sabbath the Jewish Sabbath, when the Bible does no such thing. And it makes it sound like the Adventist Church is unique when claiming the papacy is the Antichrist, when this is a historic Protestant teaching. Hopefully you don't only take the Catholic Herald's word for what the Adventist Church believes and research their beliefs for yourself. Be like the Bereans mentioned in Acts chapter 17 verse 11, which says, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new and click the bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Click on the screen to watch my video entitled 10 Facts About the Antichrist to learn more about what the Bible has to say about this sinister power. Thank you for watching and God bless you.